Hey Edge Church, this is Pastor Jeff here, and I am sitting with our founding and lead pastor, Ryan and Gina Heller. And as many of you know, in a few short weeks, we are going to move into our very own building. Uh, this is a big moment for our church, and so we're actually sitting here in the Edge Kids Theater right now because we're so busy working on some audiovisual, light, and sound things uh, throughout the building. So today, we're just going to talk about the history and the journey of our, our church. And so, how did the Edge Church get started? What was it like in the early days? Well, it, it was very interesting. We moved to the city of Aurora from another state. Uh, we didn't know one person uh, in the city when we moved here, which is always an interesting way to start a church. Uh, we, we started to meet some neighbors, invite people to a Bible study. We had lived in our home about three months, and uh, we started the Bible study, and I think we had, uh, what, five people the fir very five. first? Five, five people the yes. very first Sunday. And it was a really interesting group because... Well, I had met them through Funko in our neighborhood. We didn't know anybody. Our house had sold really fast. Living in two different people's basements. Finally, when we moved into our house, um, Bryn was born seven days later. And our, our launch team was a really interesting group of people. Uh, most of the people had very little church experience. They were either new believers or not believers yet. And uh, it was kind of a, a ragtag bunch of folks. I mean, you know, if you want to just kind of call it what it is. And, um, and yet God, God just continued to bless it. And that group continued to grow and to grow and to grow. We had our very first service at Coyote Hills Elementary School over in the Towns Reach neighborhood uh, in the summer of 2009. We did a once a month service for the summer and then we had a grand opening that fall and uh, we had we started averaging around 100 people at that point that started coming to the church every single week so it was amazing to see god's provision awesome how did you come up with the name the edge church the edge church gina is the namer we um were brainstorming and we knew that we wanted to reach people on the edge on the edge of faith, um, on the brink of divorce, um, struggling with addictions, um, you, you name it. We wanted to reach people on the edge. And so it just hit us one day that our church needed to be called the Edge Church. We, we really wanted to have a name that fit with the vision of the church. You know, we didn't want to have a name that was just cool, although we thought the Edge Church sounded cool, but really we wanted something that conveyed a message about what the church was about. And so the Edge Church really communicated the vision that God had put into our heart to reach people that were, that were far from God. What are some of the things that you did to prepare yourself to plant and launch Edge Church? We, we knew that God had a great calling upon us to move here and to reach thousands of people. So Ryan started off um, before any preview service had began um, with 100 hours of prayer. And over the course of maybe a couple of months, you completed that commitment and it really paid off. We set the course of our church on prayer. It wasn't like 100 hours straight for a whole week. Or no, I wish I was that spiritual. <laughs> I'm not quite that spiritual. Over over a few few months, you yeah. know. And I had a stopwatch that I would wear. I was able to complete that the night before our very first service, like at midnight the night before. So it was, it was really great to see what God what God did through that. Maybe describe what the first couple of years were like, you know, years one or two. Well, it was it's just challenging to start a church. Um, we officed uh, in, at, at Starbucks, uh, Chick-fil-A, and anywhere else that had free Wi-Fi. And uh, Jeff, you were here for some of that, in you know. Basement. I was <laughs> In our basement, too. The basement yes. was kind of yes. like the main base, and we would hear our kids screaming upstairs. I'd be trying to talk on the phone to people, <laughs> and the kids would be jumping up and down. I, I think I knew every barista in town uh, by first name uh, because I was there all the time. Most people thought I was unemployed because I was always there all the time. In fact, I had one of the managers at Chick-fil-A that kind of cornered me. He was like, man, who are you? What do you do? <laughs> you know, you're like the creepy guy hanging out at Chick-fil-A. And I was like, you guys have free refills and you have free Wi-Fi and that's a good thing for a church starter, okay? Uh, Target was probably the best place to have a staff meeting. Sometimes we would be at, at Starbucks and like different church members would just show up and we would, you know, be going through an agenda and getting things done and people would just pull up a chair, yep. you know, and just hang out. I thought know? it was Bible study. Yeah, it was Bible study and all that. So, so there were, there was a lot of challenge. It was fun, but it was challenging, you know, too, in that stage. God just continued to provide. I think that's one of the greatest lessons to me is just to see God's provision and God's blessing on something that, that seems like, uh, how's this all going to work? And you don't really know. And you get out there and you start doing it. And then you just see God open those doors. 
So we really had to do ministry the hard way. It was officing at portable locations. It was hiring musicians off of Craigslist. Craigslist. Uh, and we never really were sure who was going to show up that week, but we, we, we had to work with what we had. The school was very small. Everything went into a trailer. And we just did the best that we could with, with what we had, and, and we just kept uh, making those steps forward. And then God opened up another door for us for us to move to Liberty Middle School, which was huge and really took our church to another level. How has being at Liberty, uh, how has that continued to help the Edge Church meet people, reach people, see more lives changed? You know, our attendance has grown there. Uh, we, we've moved from a church of about 250 to a church of about 400 in that building. And uh, we're really thankful that there's actually like a stage there because we used to have to carry in a portable <laughs> stage. Portable and, stage. Yeah. and so uh, it's just taken the production, the quality, and the classrooms before our kids were meeting in the hallways. Now they're able to meet in classrooms. It just took everything to another level. But now I'm excited because uh, as thankful as we've been to meet at Liberty, now God has opened up this new door for us to meet at an even greater facility. I mean, an even better building. And, and now we're gonna have like permanent classrooms and no trailer to unload and like real lights and, and like real a real stage. stage and like real chairs and all that kind of stuff. That and it's truck. all gonna belong to us. <laughs> so, you know, you started in your home, you moved to, to Coyote Hills, and then you outgrew that and you moved to Liberty. When did you first sense that God was leading you lead our church to take the next step into a permanent location. 2012, I just really began to, to kind of sense it was time to take that plunge. Tell us a little bit more about some of the other places that we've looked at. I know that some of the people in our church family, they don't know that we've had some other opportunities come our way. Why don't you talk about sort of the journey we've been on that has led us to where we are now? Yeah, well, back in 2010, we had an amazing opportunity. We felt like it was a huge blessing that a 15,000 square foot building nearby was going to be given to us. Oh, it, it, it would have been a great opportunity. I mean, a free, a free building. Mm -hmm. And we really prayed about it. We talked to this church about donating their building to us in 2010 and 2011. And then shortly after that, we found the furniture store that, I, that uh, we looked at that was 20,000 square feet. We had the contract signed on that and the shopping center sold and they wouldn't release us to purchase that. We even had our financing in order. So the question was, well, Ryan, should we have the building project? And it was a good question. And we, we, we opted to go ahead and to raise funds for the REACH project to get into a building because we knew God wanted us to be somewhere. We weren't sure exactly where that was. So we just told the church, God's leading us somewhere. We're not sure where that somewhere is, but it is, it is a building. It is a place. Let's raise as much money as we can and let's let God open the doors. And so we went ahead and in and, and the fall of 2012, we had a, a building project, the REACH project, and we raised about $400,000 in pledges over a two-year period of time. And several months later is when the door began to open up for this building. It's interesting, the building that we're moving in today is actually bigger, bigger. than the first and second buildings it's added bigger. together. <laughs> it's bigger than all of them. Each one and got bigger. Yeah, each one got bigger. And I, I just think God had a bigger plan for our church than what we thought at the time. Had we moved into that 15,000 square foot building, we would have missed a great opportunity to be where we're going to be yeah. in the next year or two. And uh, we just serve a great God. I, I really believe God has a bigger, a bigger vision for our life and for our churches sometimes than we think He does. And I think this has been a great lesson for us yeah, to, to learn and discover as that. If God was telling us to no think bigger. <laughs> yeah, think bigger. Think bigger. And this is already a church, which yeah. is so great. It's already lined out to be a church before we were going to have to convert that furniture store into a church. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost a lot of money to do that. Now we move in. Yeah, we're going to add some lights and some carpet and some paint and some furnishings. And there are some things we need to do, but we're not taking out walls or remodeling or building things or getting permits or, or you know electricians and contractors it's really not it's really not that it's kind of move-in ready which is going to enable us to move in in a much quicker time frame than we would under other circumstances so when was the first time you first came and looked at this building yeah it's, it's a it's a funny story most people don't know this in 2008 we had just moved we had just put pictures on the wall we had not even started our home bible study yet and a pastor that I had just met called me and he said, I need you to meet me at this building and, and I found you a church building. 
And so I was like, okay, cool, you know, awesome, let's look at it. And I thought it would be like a real small little church building or something like that. We show up, he shows me this building, and the sticker price is over $4 million at that time. It was a 42,000 square foot building, and he looked at me and he said, Ryan, could you raise the money to buy this building? <laughs> We're thinking we haven't even had a Bible study in our home yet. We, I'm, I'm going to Bunko. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my, my wife's at Bunko. Yeah, I mean, we we had two church members, Gina and I, you know, and yeah. that that was it. I mean, we didn't we didn't we didn't even know anybody, and I knew that this was an amazing facility, and God stirred my heart, no question. But it was also a little bit intimidating yeah. to think about: is this really a reality? And two other churches have tried to buy the building previously, and both of the deals fell through. And we even put an offer together. Uh, 18 months ago on this facility and that didn't work so I mean we've tried this building one time we had the 15,000 square foot building that was going to be given twice. to us we had the twice, twice that's right and then the furniture store deal that looked like it was going to go and at the last minute we kind of got the the rug pulled out from underneath us but it was all in God's plan and it was all in God's yes. timing and I, I think we're so much m more uh, ready and so much uh, uh, better positioned to take this move today than we would have you know, been in any other circumstances. So when did you start looking at this building a second time and start having the, the conversations that have led us to where we are now? Well, we had written it off. We thought that another church was gonna purchase it. They had, a, they had a deal. We found out from somebody in our church that the building had come back on the market and we were surprised. I actually didn't believe them at first and uh, we checked on it and sure enough, it was available. And so in February of 2013, we started pursuing and talking about some creative ways that we could uh, put this deal together to do a lease purchase and to get into the facility at that point. So again, God and his timing, you know, in his plan opened up another door. Well, we've been on this, you know, just incredible journey um, all, ever since you guys moved to Colorado, obviously, but definitely the last year with looking at multiple different buildings. Where are we right now with the REACH project? What do we need to do as a church family to finish strong and, and maximize this opportunity? Yeah, it's a great opportunity for our church. Um, really, our giving is one of the, the, greatest, the greatest opportunities. You know, when you move into a new place, there's a lot of expenses that come along with that. And we've given to date about $257,000 to the REACH project, which is awesome. And you guys ought to clap for that. Yay, that's good. Two fifty seven dollars out of the $400,000 that's pledged. Um, what we need right now is we need about $25,000 immediately before move-in. And so in the next couple of weeks? In the next few weeks, we okay. need about $25,000 move-in money, you could call it that. And then in addition to that, we need about $13,000 a month over the next 15 months to finish the REACH project. And that'll cover our increased rent, uh, FF and E, it will cover our utilities and just some other maintenance and upkeep, insurance, expenses, things like that. So. Um, also, some, some of the folks that are here today may be like new to the Edge Church and they may not know that much about the REACH project. We put a packet underneath your chair and I hope that you'll take a minute to look at that. It'll give you tons of information about the REACH project, but we would still love you to get involved with us uh, by making a pledge, making a commitment. A pledge just helps us budget better. It helps us know where are we and what can we do and what can we not do. And we need to bring in about $30,000 in new pledges in addition to what I just said. And that money will help us with our earnest money that will go towards our purchase. So we have two uh, earnest money payments, one at six months and one at 12 months that we need to start getting prepared for. Awesome. Well, why are you so excited about this building? I mean, we know, we obviously know it's such a huge opportunity and God kept out dreaming um, what we had been looking at. but. For, for you personally, why are you so excited about this, this building? It, it just, it, for Gina and I, it reminds us of changed lives. It's really about the marriages that have been saved. You know, people like Beverly and Madison Wilhelm, who were on the brink of divorce, they came to the Edge Church, their marriage was reconciled. It's about the people that are hooked on drugs, uh, like Quentin Frank, who shared his story with us. It's about uh, people coming to faith in Christ. It's about people like Candace and, and, and many, many others, hundreds of other people that have committed their lives to Jesus Christ because of the ministry of the Edge Church. God has used the church to do that. And so 
Every day when we wake up in the morning, we get excited about the lives being changed. It's about the same, it's, it's, it's the same type of stories, but it's different people and it never gets old. And this building is just an opportunity for us to maximize life change, to increase our impact on this community and really even around the world. Did you ever believe uh, when you first moved here and didn't know anybody, did you ever believe that you would have a building this size? I would say yes. We did um, because we always believed that God was was leading us to have a larger church. But I don't think that we saw this size building, this opportunity, this early. Yeah. yeah, I think that was a little bit of a surprise to us. But I think you have to see things with the eye of faith before they begin to happen. At the same time, when we look at, at how great of an opportunity this is, it definitely exceeds whatever I thought we would be at four years. What are uh, some of the lessons that you have learned over the last couple of years planting um, the Edge Church, growing the Edge Church, and, and especially this season as we're about to take uh, or begin the next chapter for the Edge Church? You know, one of, one of the things that I would say is uh, we put a lot of barriers around God. You know, we believe God can do this, but He can't do that. Sometimes we believe what God can and can't do based on past experiences. Or our Sometimes, own failures. Or our own failures. Sometimes it is uh, what we've seen God do in other people's lives. I think God could give us 15,000 square foot building, but not 42,000 square foot building. It reminds me that God doesn't God doesn't operate and think in the same stratosphere we do. God doesn't see all the little rules and all the little limits. We serve a big, big God. And because we serve a big God, He hangs out in the places where there is big thinking. When we begin to think big, that's where God shows up. Uh, and we see that all the way through the Bible. I mean, Abraham had to have faith to have that, that son of promise. Esther saved the Jewish race from annihilation because she took a bold step of faith and she did something that didn't seem possible. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. You know, God's not inhibited by lions. You know, Daniel may have been, but God's not. Mm -hmm. Daniel's friends were thrown into the fiery furnace. God's not inhibited by fiery furnaces. Uh, the Apostle Paul traveling all over the world starting new churches. All of these examples through the Bible, we see people who took bold steps of faith they took the lid off of what they believed that God could do, and God did miraculous and unbelievable things. And I really believe that is the story of the Edge Church, and that's what we're really all about. Dream big. Dream big about your marriage. You know, dream big about your finances. Dream big about your church. Dream big about your family. Uh, and and I, I hope for our church, every time we drive up to, to see the building every, every weekend, that people will be inspired and they will remember that we serve a God who knows no limits. We serve a big, big God. And uh, that's, why, that's why I'm excited to, to, to move in, to hold these services, to reach lots of people for Jesus and just to, to do His work. What are some key Bible verses um, that you guys have, have leaned into as you've been at the Edge Church? Yeah, one thing Ryan said earlier, God hangs out in the place of big thinking. And uh, 2 Corinthians um, chapter 6, verse 11 through 13 says this, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open space. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. I'm speaking to you as plainly as I can and with great affection. Open up your lives, live openly and expansively. So we often put limits where God does not. God wants us to have big faith, to think big, think big about your life. Yeah, I love that. And I love Ephesians 3.20, which has really been the theme verse of, of our whole project. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than all we hope for or imagine. Mm -hmm. We thought we were just, you know, God was going to give us this little bitty place. God has given us unbelievable, unprecedented opportunity. One of the largest church buildings in our city, right here, right now. We serve an amazing, amazing God. Yes, and I'm also reminded of Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8. Um, it says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks the door will be open. Be persistent. Don't give up. 
part of our story is never, never, never give up. Keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking, and God will come through. We serve a great God, and maybe we ought to just spend a couple moments in prayer, just thanking God for His goodness and His grace and this opportunity. But before we do that, I know what everybody is wondering. They're wondering, what is the move-in date? Absolutely. <laughs> and so we want to announce that to you. The move-in date is going to be, and we need a little drum roll right here, okay? Uh, Sunday, it will be on a Sunday. Okay. So, <laughs> Sunday, November 24th. Sunday, Ooh. November 24th will be the first day. So the last Sunday will be the 17th at Liberty Middle School. We will also be meeting at 9.15 and 10.45. So the service times switch a little bit then, but it will be the last Sunday of November. We cannot wait. It's gonna be exciting. I hope you're planning on bringing some friends and, and just you know celebrating with us that day. That'll be the last Sunday before Thanksgiving, I believe, and uh, it's just gonna be great, it really is. But let's pray together. Let's just pray for God's blessings and thank Him for all that He's done. God, you are a great God. Uh, we are so, so excited to be a part of your kingdom work. You've been faithful. God, you have been, um, you, you have blessed us beyond what we thought we were even capable of receiving from you. And, and so we just want to say thank you. Lord, give us the courage and the faith to keep moving and to keep, keep moving forward and keep doing the great things that you have for us. We pray that tons of lives would be changed in our own city and around the world because of of what you're doing at the Edge Church. Uh, give us courage, give us faith today. We look forward to seeing the exciting, exciting things that you're gonna do over the next few weeks and months. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen.